The story goes like this. The soul god of Fernhelion and the lunar god of Lake Ismer rallied together to tame the six wild gods, each taking three under their wing and turning our world of chaos into one of peace. That's probably the story you've heard, right? That story is nothing more than a fairy tale. They wanted to control the world in its entirety, just the two of them. They didn't have the power to destroy the other gods, though, or to steal their powers, so they sealed them away. The third of the sealed gods was the god of art and the god of sciences, Philip Arabella. No other god could match her level of creativity or intellect, and by the time Station Refuge had been sealed, she caught on to the soul and lunar god's plan. She would have been able to create a way to release the two prior sealed gods had she more time, but she was overpowered by the other god's strength. If left conscious, she would have been able to invent an escape, so they imprisoned her in an endless slumber to keep her always restless mind at ease, letting her dream of new marvels and believe them to be reality. She lies deep within a cave system trapped within a crystal. Butterflies flock to her prison, the colorful reflecting lights mimicking a bouquet of flowers. Even trapped as a crystalline spirit, Philip can influence a mortal's mind and dreams. But she can no longer temper the amount of inspiration she releases. Anyone who ventures too far into the caves will begin to experience intense and overwhelming hallucinations and their mind will surely break. And every day, little by little, her crystals spread further across the cave system, spreading her influence. I suggest you stay well above the surface to avoid this fate. Okay, on to the actual art commentary. This is the third speed paint in the series I'm doing leading up to NaNoWriMo, so if you haven't watched the first two, I suggest starting with The God Under the Sea, then The God of the Moors, and then this one for more context. Anyway, I had an idea of what I wanted when I started drawing this. Um, I wanted to have like a dark, desaturated cave scene with the most bright, colorful crystals as the focal point. And just like how I made Station Refuge sort of be made of their elements, water and mist, I wanted Philip here to be sort of crystalline. And instead of realistic crystals, I went full iridescent rainbow explosion fantasy crystals. For her, to make her sort of look like part of the crystals, I tried to make her angular. I did a regular sketch, then went over it with lines instead of any curves. And that was surprisingly kind of a challenge, like my brain doesn't really work like that, and it was hard to conceptualize where the sections should be. But I tried to think of it like a low poly video game character, and that kind of helped. And I sort of thought of where the highlights and contours should hit and just drew the lines there. As for the character herself, Philip is the god of both art and science. Those two things work really well together and both require a level of open-mindedness, creativity, and curiosity. And like I said with the other two gods, none of them are good or evil, they just are. Obviously art and science bring a lot of good and beauty into the world, but also I don't think I have to explain the dark side of either. They can absolutely be used for evil as well. Her animal she's associated with isn't just butterflies, it's any kind of insect. Um, really, I just didn't want to draw a ton of bugs. I'm actually a little afraid of butterflies, if I'm being honest, but drawing them doesn't bug me, pun intended. But looking at reference for some scarier bugs would bother me. Like, don't get me wrong, I respect bugs and all I do for the ecosystem and I would never go out of my way to hurt them, but I also don't want to be anywhere near them or have them fly at me. That's really freaky. Anyway, back to talking about the story a little bit. Um, Seish believed he was thrown in the sea by all the gods, and Refuge Mind had been twisted to the point that she couldn't really have a coherent thought while she was trapped on the moors, but Philip was a little trickier. Because she's so smart, she kind of realized what the other gods were doing. And if they had trapped her normally, she totally would have been able to think up a way to escape and free the others. But she's trapped in her own dreams, where she probably believes that she resolved the conflict, and everything is fine, and she's helping mortals make new inventions and art. And the gods' powers still work passively, so she technically still is helping people in a sense. But any unfortunate adventures that come anywhere near her are having their brains melted, like metaphorically, before they can even see why. <laughs> 
So pretty much every area the gods are sealed at ends up being considered kind of cursed because of things like this. The people of this world believe all the gods to be fine and under the care of the two main gods if they were able to somehow reach her without having a seizure or going comatose from the levels of like divine inspiration she's pouring out. They probably wouldn't even be able to recognize who or what she is in the first place because in their mind um, the gods are safe in their own realm and wouldn't be on earth in some random cave. If the series has you at all interested feel free to stick around and subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more speed paints and info from here until NaNoWriMo in November. That's pretty much all I have to say about this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy!